Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar. Ifatunde Oguntade. This is going to be my third and final time attempting to deliver my lesson today on black male female relationships. My two previous attempts to deliver this message were interrupted by my iPhone overheating due to the strength of my message. My iPhone overheated twice under the Leo sun while attempting to deliver this message. So I'm going to try to do it one more time. My dear African brothers, I'm going to start with you. Our relationships are failing because we are not giving our women VIP treatment. Our relationships are failing because we do not give our women VIP treatment. What is VIP treatment? The V in VIP stands for value. Do you tolerate your wife or do you value your wife? Do you tolerate your baby mom or do you value your baby mom? Do you tolerate your fiance or do you value your fiance? Do you tolerate your partner or do you value your partner? Many black men tolerate their women. You tolerate them, but you don't value them. The road to value is paved with random acts of kindness. When is the last time your queen was blessed with a random act of kindness from her king? When's the last time you sent her some flowers? When's the last time you surprised her with a home cooked? candlelight meal of your own when is the last time you took her on a surprise weekend getaway without the children you have to value you your woman too many black men tolerate but they don't value too many black men think that if they pay the bills the bills is enough paying the bills is important a black man who can do so should not be undervalued by any means. Don't misunderstand your brother Ifa Tunde. A black man who can pay the bills, that brother, I tip my hat and salute to you, King. It's not easy paying the bills. I don't want to minimize the sacrifice that a black man goes through in being able to pay the bills. But if you want your woman to be comfortable in a relationship where the only thing she can look forward to from you is having the bills paid, that's a woman you will soon lose. That is a woman being taken for granted. To say I don't have to romance you because I finance you is unacceptable to most African queens. To say I don't have to romance you because I finance you is unacceptable to most African goddesses. To say I don't have to romance you because I finance you, most black women will find that unacceptable. Brother, paying the bills is not enough. You must value your women. That is the V in VIP. Black women want, need, and deserve the VIP treatment. Black women want, need, and deserve the VIP treatment. The V is for value. Do you value or do you tolerate? The next letter is for I. Invest in. Black man, do you invest in your wife? Do you invest in your queen? Do you invest in the mother of your children? Do you invest in your fiance? She trying to start a new business. How are you supporting her? She's trying to get her health back in shape. How are you supporting her? She wants to spend more time with her aging father. How are you supporting her or are you sabotaging her efforts to improve her life? Because you feel that if she do better, if she do better in life, she might look for a better partner. Are you a little jealous and concerned because you feel like if she begins to do better for herself, she might want to do better with another man. You said if she gets better, she might not want me. So your jealousy and your insecurity leads you to sabotage your woman's attempts to better herself. 
I've seen a lot of black men sabotage their women's entrepreneurial dreams because they were afraid that if she does better, she may no longer want to be with me. So you got to invest in your woman. I've seen black men invest in themselves and never invest in their women. 20 year marriage, this woman is still raising kids and cooking dinner. Now, if that's what she wants to do, nothing's wrong with that. I support traditional feminine roles. I have no issue with a woman who wants to stay home and cook and raise the kids. It is an honor to raise the children. Lord knows we need to do a better job raising the children. But if that woman wanted to go to college, if that woman wanted to get her master's, that woman wanted to become a lawyer. That woman wanted to start at a daycare. She wanted to start a business. That woman wanted to do better for herself and you blocked her while you continued to grow. That was selfish. And now you're afraid that if you help her grow, she might want to pay you back and leave you once she does better. Are you investing in your woman? Are you valuing your woman? And then we go to the letter P. Because black women need, want, and must be VIP'd. Black women need the VIP treatment. They need to be valued. They need to be invested. And the P is actually a double P. The P is actually a double P. It is VIPP. -P. Black women need to be VIP'd. And the last two P's stands for protection and penis. She needs to be penised. P-E-N-I-S-E-D. If your black woman is not being properly penised. If she is not being properly phallused, I don't care how many bills you pay. I don't care how much you support her entrepreneurial dreams. If you cannot rock her sugar box, there will be issues. If you cannot rock her sugar box, there will be issues. If you cannot rock her sugar box, there will be issues. You want some peach cobbler, but the peach cobbler is never warm. Maybe you can't rock the sugar box. You want the center buns, but they never warm. Maybe you can't rock the sugar box. You want the honeycomb hideout, but the honey is never warmed up. It might be because you can't rock the sugar box. And let me say this to my brothers. Let me say this to my brothers. If she got a loosey goosey, that's not on you. That's on her. If she got a loosey goosey, that's on her. That's not on you. If she coming to you with a loosey goosey, that is not your fault because no man should be responsible for rocking a loose box. You understand? If the screws have fallen out the box, if the bolts have fallen out the box, if the walls have been torn down, that's not on you, black man. I'm talking about a healthy sugar box. I'm talking about a healthy cookie jar. I'm talking about some healthy center buns. I'm talking about some nice and fresh peach cobbler. I'm not talking about no crusty cobbler, some old stale center buns, a sugar box that got all the sugar rocked out. It's not on a black man to please a woman who has an unhealthy sugar box. I just want to say that for the record. I just want to say that for the record. But brother, you got to rock the sugar box. And let me say this to my brothers. I need y'all to stop the Viagra. Stop the Viagra. It's killing us. If you are not in shape, your heart cannot take the Viagra. Stop the Viagra, brothers. Stop the Viagra. We're not going to talk about Uncle Shannon Sharp. I heard he got caught on a live banging out a snow bunny. We're not going to talk about Uncle Shannon Sharp. I heard he got caught on a live banging out a snow bunny. We're not going to talk about Uncle Shannon Sharp being snow bunnied on Instagram Live. We're not going to laugh at our brother. We are not going to laugh at our brother. I just hope to Shannon Sharp that the snow bunny didn't tap his Instagram Live when he wasn't looking. I just hope for my Uncle Shannon Sharp that the snow bunny didn't tap the Instagram Live while he was popping that Viagra pill. I just hope for my Uncle Shannon Sharp that the snow bunny didn't set him up because if he didn't hit that button, I don't know how in the hell that button got hit and he says he's never been on Instagram Live. Uncle Shannon Sharp, the greatest tight end in NFL history, he said he never been on Instagram Live. So if Unc never been on Instagram Live, how in the hell did Instagram Live go on? 
It was either the white power structure or he was snow bunnied. It was either the white power structure or he was snow bunnied. It was either the white power structure or Uncle Shannon Sharp was snow bunny. But I'm going to say this to Uncle Shannon and the rest of you ninjas out here. Stop popping them Viagras. All you have to do is go to the health food store. Listen to me, black man. I'm about to throw you an alley -oop. Listen to me, black man. I'm about to throw you an alley -oop. Listen to me, black man. I'm about to throw you an alley -oop. You don't need Viagra. All you need is red maca and black maca. M-A-C-A. Get on Amazon right now and order you some maca powder or some maca tablets. 100% natural. 100% natural. Black woman, are you listening to me, my beautiful African queens? If your man can't perform, I want you to treat him to a bottle of red maca tablets or black maca tablets. It's M-A-C-A, -A, maca root. They need that maca root. That's all you need, brother. Make you a smoothie with some maca root one hour before it's time to rock the sugar box. All you need is some maca root powder. Go to the health food store. Go to the whole food store. Hop on your Amazon Prime and order you a bag of maca root powder or some maca root tablets. It works better than Viagra and it does not hurt your health. Completely healthy, completely organic. Black women, if your man can't do what he needs to do for you, Please go to the health food store and get that brother a bottle of red maca or black maca root tablets. That's all you need. That's all you need. That's all you need. You don't need that Viagra. That Viagra going to kill you. Black men over 40, over 50, over 60. You don't need Viagra. Get the maca root. And you will be Shangolicious. And you will be Shangolicious for your queen. And you will be Shangolicious for your queen. So brothers, they need to be valued. They need to be invested. They need to be penised. And they need to be protected. Protection doesn't just mean defend them from racist whites. Protection doesn't just mean defend them from home invasion. Protection doesn't just mean to defend them from disrespect from black beta males and Neanderthals. Protection means protecting her self-respect, protecting her dignity, protecting her spirituality, protecting her integrity. That means not flirting with other women in front of your women. You got to protect her self-esteem and her self-respect. The biggest protection black women want from us is a protection of their self-respect. The biggest protection black women want is protect me from being insulted. Protect my integrity as your queen. Protect my integrity as your fiance. Protect my integrity as the mother of your children. When we hear the word protection, we think self-defense. And with the migrant crisis, we will need self-defense. Make no Mistake about it. We must defend our women physically, militaristically, violently, if necessary. But don't forget the soft protections. That's the hard protection. But don't forget the soft protection like protecting her women, her femininity, protecting her femininity, protecting her decency, protecting her character, protecting her honor. Don't make her. Check your baby mom because you letting your baby mom do too much. She should never have to step out of character and protect your baby mom. That's your job. She should never have to step out of character and protect her honor from your mother who got a tendency to say disrespectful things out of her mouth. She should never have to step out of character. You're not protecting her honor. You are not protecting her. Uh, flirting with other women in front of her. That's not protecting her honor, black man. Protect your queen. Protect your queen. Now, I'm going to flip this around. I'm going to flip this. I talked about what men need to do for women. The VIP treatment. Black women want, need, and deserve the VIP treatment. She want to be valued. She want to be invested in. She want to be protected and properly penised. She want to be valued. She want to be invested in. And she want to be properly protected and well penised. You got to VIP her. 
If you don't VIP her, you will lose her. Thinking that it's okay because you pay the bills and that's enough, you will lose her. I'm telling you that right now. I'm telling you that right now. Something else, my brothers. You got to shango stick your queen in the daytime sometimes, not just at night. You got to shango stick your queen in the daytime, not just at night. I want you to hear me. Our testosterone levels are highest in the early morning. That's why you have a tendency to wake up with a full ra erection, a full ra erection, because our testosterone is highest in the morning. Now, you might not feel like playing around in the morning because you got to get ready for work, but that's when your testosterone is the highest with the rising sun. Our testosterone rises with the rising sun. I said our testosterone rises with the rising sun. Your testosterone is at its highest peak in the morning. I'm just telling you. When Ra rises, your eruption rock will rise. You're best able to get a rock when Ra rises in the morning. Your testosterone is low. In the early evening hours. We normally like to shango stick our sugar boxes. We normally like to shango stick our sugar boxes after dinner, right? So you got a full stomach of food in you. The sun is down, so your testosterone levels are down. The sun is down, so your testosterone levels are down. And you got a full stomach of food. You are not going to be able to rock the sugar box, my brother. Now, your testosterone will rise overnight because it's getting ready for the rising sun. So if you wake up at two, three in the morning, sometimes, brothers, if you notice, if you fall asleep and wake up two, three in the morning, your testosterone might be right. You might be ready for a sugar box session because your testosterone dips in the early evening and it begins to rise overnight in preparation for the rising sun. I strongly suggest you rock the sugar box before dinner. If you can, rock the sugar box before dinner. Now, that's not easy in the winter. That's not easy in the fall because the sun sets earlier. But in the summer months, when the summer months, you want to tag them Cinnabons before the sun goes down. I'm just giving some of my brothers because we fail to understand the relationship between masculinity and the rising sun. We fail to understand the relationship between masculinity and the rising sun. Testosterone and the rising sun. You are at your strongest virility at sunrise. You are at your strongest virility at sunrise and you are at your lowest just after sunset. I'm just giving you the facts. Grab you a bottle of maca root tablets or get you a bag of maca root powder and put a little bit of that in your smoothie. I'm just giving you some tips, my brothers. I'm still healthy enough where I ain't got them problems. God willing, the Prince of Pan-Africanism will never have those problems. But I'm just looking out for my brothers because I can't please every African queen. I can't. I got to build schools. I got to lead the Pan-African freedom movement. I got to attend to the mental health issues of African people. I ain't free to rock every sugar box. That'd take too much of my divine ashe. I would be too tired to give my speeches. I would be too tired to go live. I cannot rock every sugar box. So brothers, exercise, get your maca root smoothies and make sure you make in love in rhythm with the sun. When the sun is up, you should go up. And when the sun is down, you're likely to stay down. I said, when the sun is up, you should go up. And when the sun is down, you're likely to stay down. Rock that sugar box right after work. Don't wait till after dinner, my brother. Now, let me switch this around for a minute. I talked about black women needing to be VIP. I talk about black women needing to be VIP. 
I talked about black women needing to be VIP, valued, invested in, protected, and properly phallist. Well, let's talk about the sisters and what y'all need to do for us. Oh, yes. My unapologetically African alpha males, are you ready? My unapologetically African anti-snow bunny alpha males, are you ready? My unapologetically African anti-snow bunny alpha males, are you ready? Sisters, black men want to feel valued, invested in, and protected. Uh-huh. We want to feel valued if we paying all the bills. Massage my crusty ass feet once in a blue moon. You ain't got to massage them all the time. But once in a while, when I come home from working hard, paying all the bills, you should have a hot bucket of water for these crusty feet. You should rub them feet down and put some nice music on and just talk to me about my day dealing with the Neanderthal nation. Do y'all sisters know what a black man goes through putting up with these heathens every day? Do you know what it's like for a black man to have to bury his pride to make sure we can pay the mortgage? Do you know what it's like for a black man to have to bury his pride in order to pay your car note? Do you know what it's like for a black man to have to bury his pride to pay tuition for the daycare preschool or private school. Every one, it only take a foot soak. He come home from work, tell him to wash his ass first. Because he don't need to be smelling like butt cheek and fried chicken. Tell him to wash his ass first. He don't need to come to you smelling like butt cheek and fried chicken. But after he washes his ass after work, tell him to go lay on the bed, sisters. And get some of that homemade shea butter. Get some of those essential oils that y'all like. Put the essential oils on his temple and his third eye, the back of his neck. You know what to do, sister. And rub him on down. Rub him on down. Rub him on down. Okay? Y'all know what to do, ladies. Y'all know what to do. A nice back massage. Most of what we need don't cost money. See, the things y'all need cost money. Black men, the things we want from our women don't cost no damn money. You hear me, black woman? It don't cost no money to please a black man. See, that's why we got to talk about this. The things we want from y'all don't cost no money. When the last time you looked your man in the eye and said, my king, I just want to say thank you. I know it's a man's job to hold the family down. But I just want to say thank you. He going to act like it didn't matter because, you know, we got to keep our gangster. He going to act like it didn't matter because, you know, we got to keep our gangster. He going to act like it didn't matter because he got to keep his gangster. Oh, but believe me, when you walk out that room, he might shed a tear. When you walk out that room, he might shed a tear because he never heard his mama tell his father that. He might have never heard his mama tell his father that. He might shed a tear. You might have just pushed the button to transform that man into the man you need him to be. Just a little gratitude, sister. Value your man. We need the emotionals and the psychologicals. And go get you a yoni steam every once in a while, ladies. The older you get, the more you need to make use of the yoni steam because your rubber band don't snap back the way the young queen's rubber band snap back, if you know what I mean, because I don't want to get vulgar because we got the young Africans on the live too. Your rubber band loses its elasticity as you get older. Now, don't get me wrong. You got sisters in their 40s and 50s and they rubber, they rubber band still pop. They rubber band still pop. But the older you get and the more miles on your engine, my sister, the older you get and the more miles on your engine, my sister, your rubber band won't stretch back. And I can tell you if it's one thing a black man loves is a tight rubber band. There's nothing in this world. Woo! There's nothing in this world that gets a man's attention like a rubber band with a kung fu grip. But we're going to move on from that because it's consciousness over the cookies. I just want my sisters to understand. I just want my sisters to understand that the things black men need from you to feel, val to feel valued won't cost you anything at all. Because the best way you can make us feel valued is in the home. Now, you can treat us to a nice vacation 
weekend getaway. See, we don't need seven days in Jamaica. We don't need that. Y'all need that. And we do it for y'all. But we don't need seven days in Jamaica. We don't need two weeks in Turks and Caicos. We don't need that. Y'all need that. And so we give y'all that. But we don't need that. You can drive us two hours away out into the wilderness and make a home cooked meal. Make a home cooked meal out in the cabin. And let's go sit by the water. Let's go for a hike. Those are the things we need. Activities in action. That's how you show value to a black man. Clip his nails, cut the boogie, the hairs out of his nose. Treat him to a teeth cleaning. Oh, yes. Treat him to a teeth cleaning. Oh, yes. Black women, you must show us that you value and then you got to invest in us. Since you like bragging that you make more money than me. You got to invest in us since you like bragging that you make more money than me. Then how about you invest in your husband's business? He want to open. He would have opened up a little tire repair shop. Those tire repair shops make a lot of money. Trust me. He want to do a little corner store. Invest in your husband's corner store. Or are you one of those insecure black women who want your husband to stay unemployed? Because we do have them. Are you one of those insecure black women who want your boyfriend to stay without job? A lot of black women will sabotage their men getting a job because that puts him around other women if he can work. So, you know, if he get a nice haircut, put on a nice suit and tie, some nice blue overalls for the tire shop, other women going to start looking at your man. So you rather keep him unemployed and dusty because you insecure. Are you one of them sisters who want to keep your man unemployed and dusty because you insecure? Don't complain about a man who ain't got no job when you're not trying to help him get one. You won't give him no public transportation tokens. You won't give him a bus pass. You won't pay for the Lyft or the Uber. He trying to get work. You acting like you want him to have work. But deep down inside, you don't want that man with no job because you think if he get a job, he might find another sugar box to rock. You rather keep them home, bored and unemployed. You can't have it both ways, sisters. Do you want a man who's economically viable? Or do you just want a shango stick in the bedroom? Do you want a black man who's economically viable? Or do you just want a shango stick? She said, how is this our responsibility? Because if I'm struggling, my black sister, upper echelon, you sound like you're an uppity queen. But if I'm a struggling brother, my sister, and you look at all of the black men who have been unfairly prosecuted and sentenced to jail, convicted of felonies, we come out, it's hard for us to get a job. So if we are in a relationship and you have enough disposable income to help invest in my economic vitality, why would you not? So are you telling me you only want me for my sexual vitality, but you have no interest in my economic vitality, sister? Are you telling me that you're only interested in my sexual vitality, but you have no interest in my economic vitality, black woman? You have black women like that. All they want is a man's sexual vitality, but they don't mind him being unemployed because as long as he ain't got no job, I don't have to worry about being alone. As long as he ain't got no job, you're not building a man. You're helping a man build himself. You're probably going to be by yourself the rest of your life. I can tell by the way you're talking. There's nothing wrong with a black woman having a sense of entitlement. But some of you have a toxic sense of entitlement. Some black women have a toxic sense of entitlement. Your sense of entitlement is so materialistic, so superficial, so unrealistic. That all you deserve is a Cinnabon slap and a pat on the back. Take your ass home, girl. Some of you sisters have a sense of entitlement that is so, too materialistic, too unrealistic, and too superficial. And that's why you will end up with a Cinnabon slap and a smack on the back. Take your ass on home. There's nothing wrong with helping your man build himself when you got it like that. 
you want a man who's equally yoked. You a whole lawyer making $300,000 a year and you looking for a man who's equally yoked. That's going to be hard. There's nothing wrong with getting you a $125,000 a year plumber. There's nothing wrong with you getting a $75,000 a year postal worker. Nothing wrong with you getting an eighty and ninety thousand dollar a year public transportation driver. Get your head out the clouds, black woman, because I don't want to see you growing old by your damn self. Get your head out the clouds, black woman. I don't want to see you growing old by your damn self. I said, get your head out the clouds, sister. You got to value your man, invest in your man, and then you got to protect his honor too. We need to be protected by y'all, not physically. We need to be protected by y'all psychologically and spiritually. When your mother is telling you he don't make enough money to be with you, do you check your old crusty mom? Much respect to the queen mothers, no disrespect. Much respect to the queen mother. When your mother telling you he don't make enough money to be with you, do you check her bougie ass? When your father is trying to disrespect your husband in a polite way in front of your face, do you tell your father, I chose him. You don't need to approve. When your brothers and sisters is making jokes about your man formerly having been incarcerated, do you let them know that y'all got relatives who've been to jail too? Don't act like our shit don't stink. Do you defend your man's honor around your sorors? Do you defend your man's honor around your cousins? Do you defend your man's honor in front of your parents, your aunts and your uncles? Or do you let them disrespect that man? Because their opinion matters, matters more than your own. Black man, don't ever marry a woman who is a follower. Don't ever marry a woman who is a follower. Don't, every, don't ever marry a woman who is a follower. And black woman, don't you ever marry a man who is a follower. If that man will do whatever his father tells him to do, if that man will do whatever his uncle tells him to do, if that man will do whatever his big brother or frat brothers tell him to do, that's not a man you need. You don't want nobody else running your life through proxy. I'll give you an example of my own. My 13-year-old daughter. I'm giving you an example of my own. My 13-year-old daughter, when she was born, I chose an African middle name from South Africa. My eldest daughter has an African middle name from the South African culture. And my youngest daughter, I chose a different African middle name from South African culture, which means royal princess, one of the Zulu culture and one of the Kosa culture. And my youngest daughter's mother told me to my face, that her brother did not like the name. And so she would not be giving it to my daughter. Did y'all hear what I said? She said, my brother, your bitch ass brother, excuse my French brothers and sisters. I don't want to get out of character. Ancestors, forgive me. Your punk ass brother, excuse me, ancestors. I want to stay in character right now. Let me, let me stay in character. Let me stay in character. She said, her bougie ass brother did not agree with the middle name I chose for my daughter. That's what I'm talking about when I say don't date or marry somebody who will listen to somebody else. Somebody else's opinion about your marriage. Somebody else's opinion about your children. Somebody else's opinion about your household. Somebody else's opinion about what y'all were going to do. The worst thing you can do is date somebody, marry somebody, 
engage somebody who always telling you, but my mama said, but my daddy said, but my cousin said, but my uncle said, but my auntie said, nothing wrong with getting advice. I love advice from my elders. Nothing wrong with getting advice. I love advice from my elders. Nothing wrong with getting advice. I love advice. But they not getting advice. They are getting orders. See, you don't have to follow advice. You have to follow orders. And black man, don't you let another man run your house. Not your father-in-law, uncle-in-law, none big brother-in-law. You might got, listen, I'm the man of this house. And if I need to tell your father that, if I need to tell your brother that, if I need to tell your uncle that, I'm going to tell him that. I respect them. But family, you don't run shit in these four walls. Be respectful when you do it, brothers, because they steal your in-laws. Be respectful when you do. And black woman, if you got to tell his sister with her lonely ass, if you got to tell his mother with her bougie ass, if you got to tell her aunt, tell his aunt, sisters, you go tell him, don't go too hard. Don't go into a post-traumatic relationship disorder temper tantrum now, black woman. I need you to maintain your honor at all times, my beautiful African sisters. Are you listening to me? Butter almond and butter pecan. Are you listening to me? Sweet brown sugar and warm pistachio. Are you listening to me? Chocolate fudge and African butterscotch. If you got to check his mother, do it with a little bit of love. If you got to check his auntie, do it with a little bit of love. If you got to check his big sister, do it with a little bit of love. And then you practice a little bit of e tune day psychology. Because, you know, I think I'm the greatest psychotherapist to ever walk the face of the earth. You say, listen, big sister, I know you love your brother. You help your mama raise your brother. And I know it might be a little uncomfortable knowing that you are no longer the most important woman in his life. I know that might bother you a little bit, but I got to ask you this. And I'm saying this to you in love. This is how you get at it, my sisters. This is how you get at it, my sisters. A caramel honey queen, Lord have mercy. A chocolate fudge with a sweet honey dip, complete. Lord. You say to her, are you afraid of being lonely? Are you afraid of being lonely and therefore you want your brother to be lonely so y'all can be lonely together? Say it. As calm as I said. It. See, when you really got to throw that shade, always throw shade in a calm way. Always throw your shade in a calm way because it hits home harder when you say it calm. Is the real issue you're afraid of being lonely? And so you rather your brother be lonely with you. And look at it just like that. Stare right in the eyes for five seconds. Count to yourself one. Two Negro pen, three Negro pen, four Negro pen, five Negro pen, and then you walk off. So when he say, you yelled at my sister, no, I didn't. You cursed my mama, no, I didn't. I spoke to your mother the same way I'm speaking to you. Black man, you got to do that too. Excuse me, my beautiful queen. I spoke to your father in the same tone I'm speaking to you. I was masculine, I was unapologetic, but I was humble and respectful because your father is still my elder. I was masculine, I was unapologetic, but I was humble and respectful because your father is still my elder. Yes, I had to check your father, but I did it respectfully and with humility because he is old enough to be my father. You got to be humble because if you're not, they're going to try to misrepresent you. They're going to misrepresent you to your husband. They're going to misrepresent you to your wife. So you got to use strategy. You got to use strategy. Misery loves company. Misery loves... When my homies come to me and say, Doc, I'm thinking about leaving her. First thing I say is, do we need a session together? 
I might think he need to leave her ass, but I'm not telling him that because black wives matter. I think he might need to leave her ass, but I'm not telling him that because black wives matter. I might think he need to leave her ass, but it ain't my place to say that because I might have too much influence. So I'm going to say, listen, brother, y'all been together 10 years. Y'all been together five years. Y'all just got married last year. How about y'all have a session with King Kong consciousness? Let me come to the house. And let's have a rectification of this romance. Let me see if I can get y'all to to see each other's perspective. Because your ego might be out of control and hers too. Your pain body is awoken, is awakened, and her pain body is awakened. And when you got two pain bodies woke up, it's not going to matter. You yelling, she's screaming. You acting like a woman, she is a woman. We got to do something about this. You acting like a woman, she is a woman. We got to do something about this. See, black man, you got to get in the habit of speaking your peace and leaving it. Because if you yell at me, I'm going to spend a night in the hotel. Yell at me again, my beautiful African wife. I'm going to go and spend a night at the hotel or my brother's house or my sister's house or my mama's house because I will not allow my woman to disrespect me. You can say whatever you want to say, but you will not treat me like a child. I am not your son. You are not my mother. I'm going to give you five minutes to get your pain body back in your unconscious. I want you to repack your pain body back in your unconscious because you're taking out pain from past lovers on me. I'm not your ex-husband. I'm not your baby dad. I'm not your boyfriend from high school. I'm not those married men you had affairs with who told you they was going to leave their wife and they was only lying because they wanted that sugar box rock. I'm not them. I'm your current husband. And you're not going to take out the pain you have for them on me. I'm going to give you five minutes to regain consciousness over your emotions. Five minutes and black woman, you can do the same thing. Black woman, you can do the same thing. Tell that man, I am your wife. I am not your slave. You will never talk to me like that again. You owe me an apology and a promise. It won't happen. See, I got one rule in my relationships. I got one rule. The golden rule, the Ifa Tunde golden rule in my relationships. You know what that rule is? What is the Ifa Tunde rule? If I don't do it to you, you have you do not have permission to do it to me. If I don't curse at you, you do not have permission to curse at me. If I don't raise my voice at you, you do not have permission to raise your voice at me. If I don't come home late, you don't have permission to come home late. Oh, yes. If I don't talk to my baby mom after midnight on the phone, you don't talk to your baby dad after midnight on the phone. That's my rule. It's the golden rule. If I don't do it, you don't do it. The Ifa Tunde rule. And if you violate three times on the third time, I'm going away for 30 days. No conversation, no connection. 30 days, you won't hear from me. And in those 30 days, you better go find you a therapist because after 30 days like Nat Turner, I'm coming back to the village. After 30 days like Nat Turner, I'm coming back to the village. After 30 days like Nat Turner, I'm coming back to the village. And when I come back to the village, you better have had about six psychotherapy sessions with a strong black woman who respects black men. Don't get you black man. Make sure your woman don't go to therapy with no damn feminist or rainbow ganger. Your marriage will be over after five therapy sessions. Black man, make sure your wife's therapist is not a rainbow ganger or feminist. You will be done. That marriage will be over. You tell her I need to meet your therapist. I got to meet my wife's therapist. When I marry my two queens, I got to meet the therapist. I got to meet them because I got to make sure this is not a rainbow ganger or a feminist because you're not going to destroy my house in the name of psychotherapy. You are not going to destroy my marriage in the name. I'm serious, my brother. I'm dropping knowledge. Now, your psychological IQ might be too low to understand the, the jewels I'm dropping right now. I'm giving out jewels right now. I'm serious. And black woman, you better make sure your husband's therapist ain't a rainbow ganger or an anti-black woman hater. Y'all better check these therapists now. Y'all better check these therapists. And when I come back after my 30-day hiatus to give you time to get yourself together, black woman, when I come back...
back after my 30 days. My sugar box. My sugar box. My sugar box. Better be tight. That rubber band. I'm going to snap that rubber band and it better pop right back. I'm going to pull that rubber band. That rubber band by the pop. Because if that rubber band don't pop. You was out there getting your sugar box rock. Oh Lord, the marriage might be over. Oh yes. You want two husbands? Go ahead. They want to share the same sugar box? Be my guest. Your rubber band will be extra loose. I'm going to tell you that. I don't know too many men who want that. That rubber band going to be as loosey-goosey. You might as well get a t-shirt right now. You're going to have two husbands? I'm going to send you a loosey-goosey t-shirt overnight. I got some Lucy Gucci t-shirt. Black man, if you ever catch your woman cheating, I don't want you to say nothing. Black man, if you ever catch your woman cheating, I don't want you to say nothing. I'm talking to my unapologetically African alpha males. If you ever catch your woman cheating, don't say nothing. Order a Lucy Gucci t-shirt from Dr. Umar and send it to her at the job. Nicely wrapped with a vase of flowers. And you're going to put, put the uh, Lucy Gucci t-shirt inside of some nice gift wrap and put a nice gift ribbon on it and you're going to send your wife a loosey goosey t-shirt at the job oh that's how you get her ass back oh she ain't gonna know what to do she won't be able to do the rest of her work she will she'll be like oh my god tyrone found out i gave away one of his cinnabons randy found out somebody had a couple tablespoons out of his sugar box Raheem found out that somebody was sampling his peach cobbler while he was away for 30 days. Black man, that's how you get, oh yeah, cheat on me. I don't say nothing. I don't say nothing. Mm -mm. I catch a woman with a Lucy Goosey. I'm not saying nothing. I'm going to send her a Lucy Goosey t-shirt and a Lucy Goosey trophy. Every time she get a Lucy Goosey, I'm going to send her a Lucy Goosey t-shirt and a Lucy Goosey trophy. I'm going to say, wow, you got six like Michael Jordan. You got six trophies just like Michael Jordan. You done brought me Lucy ass coochie crumbs six times in a row. I'm going to put you on Mount Rushmore with Michael Jordan. We need to have a Lucy Goosey Mount Rushmore in black America. We need a Lucy Goosey Mount Rushmore. And oh, yes. Yeah. See, I got solutions for days. I got solutions for days. But in all seriousness, as I wrap this up, podcast, you got to text me for that. 215-989-9858. Podcast, you got to text me for that. 215-989-9858. And guess what else you're going to send a black man? It's the Lucy Goosey package. I'm going to be selling these coming real soon. Dr. Umar's Lucy Goosey pack. She's going to get a Lucy Goosey trophy, a Lucy Goosey t-shirt, and she's going to get a gift certificate to the Yoni Spa to fix the goose. Oh, yes. That's how much we love our black women. We're not going to give up on you, black woman. Even though you climbed in my bed with some Lucy Goosey crumbs, I'm going to give you a gift certificate to the Yoni Spa in Baltimore, the Yoni Spa in Philadelphia, the Yoni Spa in Dallas, the Yoni Spa in Jackson, Mississippi, the Yoni Spa in Oakland, Detroit, Chicago, and Milwaukee, the Yoni Spa in Louisville, St. Louis, Kansas City, Memphis, Tennessee, the Yoni Spy in Nashville and Knoxville, the Yoni Spy in Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Orlando and St. Petersburg, the Yoni Spy in Raleigh and Durham and Eastern Shore, Carolina, the Yoni Spy in the Hampton Roads of Hampton and Suffolk and Norfolk and Portsmouth. In fact, if you're a black woman and you own a Yoni Spy, or you sell Yoni treatments, text me the link to your website. I'm going to give y'all some free publicity. I'm serious right now. Because I'm. if you are a black woman and you have your own Yoni treatments, you sell Yoni treatments or you have a Yoni spa, Yoni detox, text Dr. Umar. I'm going to give y'all some free publicity because there's some of my unapologetically African anti-snow bunny alpha males who got wives who've been coming home with a loosey goosey and he don't know what to do about it. He love his wife. But before they got married, she put too many miles on the engine. Before they got married, she needs a new rubber band. She needs a new rubber band. That goose needs a new strap. 
that goose needs a new strap. So if there's any black women out there who got any kind of a yoni spa, yoni treatment, yoni pearls, so our black women can rebirth, rebirth the sugar box. We got some black women who need to rebirth the sugar box. Text me, 215-989-9858. Black men, I'm going to post this on my social media. And all you got to do is call the closest one up and gift your wife with a gift certificate. And when she say, why you buy me this? Just say, because I love you. Don't say, because you need it. Don't say, because your yoni got a certain odor. Don't say, because your rubber band pop. Don't be disrespectful to our black women. They've been through a lot, brothers. They've been through a lot. Don't say, just say, because I love you. And I just want you to have a day to yourself. I'm going to drop you off and pick you up. You need this. I just want you to be my, my, I'm just investing in my wife. Is it okay for me to invest in my wife? Never tell her why you got the Yoni treatment. Don't ever tell her because you're going to hurt her feelings. Don't ever tell. I never, if a woman ever gave me a loosey goosey, I don't tell them. I never tell a woman. I never tell them because that's too harmful. They know they gave me a loosey goosey when they get the t-shirt, the trophy, and the gift certificate to the Yoni spot. Oh yeah, see, I'm all about keeping the black family together. That's why I'm working on the black family retreats. That's why I'm working on the single black woman retreats, the single black man retreats. I'm working on the mixed race African retreats. I'm working for the chemically addicted retreats. I'm working on the pan-African political science class retreats. Oh yes. Black woman, please VIP a man. Black man, please VIP a woman. I don't want no divorces in 2024. I don't want no more divorces. We got the whole September, the whole October, the whole November, the whole... We in the last third of 2024. We are in the final third of the year. I don't want to see nobody else in divorce court. I don't want to see nobody else in divorce court. Black man, VIP your women. Black queens, VIP your man. The grass ain't greener on the other side. Trust me. The grass ain't greener. If you got a good woman, try to work it out. You got a good man, try to work it out. Stop rushing to be single because the only thing out here waiting for your ass is damaged goods. The only thing waiting for your ass is damaged goods. Stay your ass in that marriage and work it out unless it is psychologically, sexually, or emotionally abusive, then you gotta go. If the marriage is physically, psychologically, emotionally, or sexually abusive, you gotta get the hell out of Dodge. But don't be breaking up and ending no marriage over no petty nonsense. You see Judge Mathis, and he's a millionaire. Judge Mathis said he going back to get his wife. Judge Mathis, shout out to Judge Mathis. He said, I'm going back to get my wife. Judge Mathis ain't play no games. He said, hell no, I want my queen back. Sometimes you got to swallow your pride, black man. Sometimes you got to swallow your pride and go tell your baby mama, you the best thing ever happened to me. Can I have another chance? Go tell your baby mama right now, you the best thing ever happened. Go tell your ex-wife, you the best thing. Stop worrying about my air conditioner. I'm a Leo who loves to sweat. Stop worrying. I hope that's a woman and not a man. We need some testosterone tablets. I'm so sick and tired of you beta ass males distracting my message with these damn feminine ass ways. Where are the testosterone tablets? This your big brother King Kong Consciousness signing out. 215-989-9858. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG School. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. If you have any topics you want Dr. Umar to talk about, text my phone. What's something y'all want me to talk about? What's the topic? Romance, politics. What's the topic? It could be romance or revolution. It could be the revolution for African people. It could be romance. What's a topic I want me to talk about? You could text my phone, 215-989-9858. I said 215-989-9858. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. I said hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. I said hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. I love you too, Queen Kong. I love you too, Queen Kong. I love all my beautiful black sisters. Black queens forever, snow bunnies never. Black queens forever, snow bunnies never. I said black queens forever. From Africa to Alabama. From Jamaica to South Jersey. From Canada to Connecticut. From Britain to the Bronx. I said black queens forever, snow bunnies never.